The US Marines are renowned for being one of the toughest fighting forces in the world, known for their resilience, adaptability, and ability to carry out complex missions in some of the most challenging environments. Central to their operational success are their amphibious fighting vehicles, like the Amphibious Assault Vehicle, or AAV. These vehicles are not just transport, they are armored fortresses on water and land, enabling Marines to execute rapid assaults from ship to shore and sustain combat operations far inland. AAVs allow the Marines to strike swiftly and unexpectedly, reinforcing their reputation as a versatile and formidable force capable of projecting power anywhere in the world. Whether launching a beachhead assault or navigating hostile terrain, these vehicles are an essential asset that provides both mobility and protection, making the Marines an unstoppable force in amphibious warfare. The illustrious Amphibious Assault Vehicle, or AAV, boasts a rich and storied past, having been a vital component in numerous pivotal battles. Its journey began as a formidable landing craft, proving its mettle in the Falkland Wars, the invasion of Grenada, Operation Desert Storm, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom. It even spearheaded advancements in high-energy anti-aircraft laser technology, further solidifying its place in the military history. Despite its awe-inspiring legacy, the versatile AAV was ultimately forced to retire from the seas with a permanent ban. Yet this steadfast warrior refuses to fade into obscurity, continuing to serve a purpose and fulfill its duty. For, as the old adage goes, once a Marine, always a Marine. The AAV landing vehicle, also known as the Amphibious Assault Vehicle, or the AAV P-7A-1, has been a vital component of the United States Marine Corps since its introduction in the 1970s. The AAV is designed to transport troops and cargo from ship to shore, making it an indispensable tool for amphibious assaults and other maritime operations. The AAV P7A1 measures approximately 26 feet 2 inches in length, 10 feet 8 inches in width, and 10 feet 2 inches in height. It has a combat weight of 29 tons and can transport up to 21 combat-equipped marines in addition to its three-person crew. The vehicle's armor is composed of a welded aluminum hull that provides protection against small arms fire, artillery shell fragments and other battlefield threats. This vehicle is powered by a Cummins VT400 diesel engine, which generates 525 horsepower and allows it to reach a top speed of 45 miles per hour on land and 8.2 miles per hour on water. This versatile vehicle has a range of 300 miles on land and 20 nautical miles on water. One of the most significant aspects of the AAV is its ability to traverse various types of terrain. Its unique suspension system, composed of torsion bars and hydraulic shock absorbers, ensures a smooth ride on land. The AAV is equipped with a UGWS, or upgunned weapons station, that consists of a Mark 19 40mm grenade launcher and an M2.50 caliber machine gun. This combination of weapons provides the AAV with a powerful punch against both infantry and light-armored targets. The AAV landing vehicle has undergone several variations since its introduction, starting with the LVTP-7 in 1972. The original series was armed with an M85 12.7mm machine gun. In 1982, the LVTP-7A1 upgrade was introduced, and the vehicle was renamed the AAVP-7A1 in 1984. The most common AAVP-7A1 is the personnel variant, carrying a turret with an M2HB 12.7mm heavy machine gun and a Mark 19 40mm automatic grenade launcher. This version is capable of carrying 21 combat-equipped marines in addition to the crew of four, driver, 
crew chief or vehicle commander, gunner and rear crewman. Two other key variants include the AAVC-7A1 command and the AAVR-7A1 recovery vehicles. The command version features a range of communication equipment, while the recovery variant is equipped with a crane and tools for field repairs. Both versions do not have a turret and carry a smaller number of personnel. Many AAVs have been modified to carry the Mark 154 MCLC or Mine Clearance Line Charge, a system designed to breach lanes through minefields. MCLCs were used in the 1991 Persian Gulf War and Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003. In the 1970s, the US Army used an LVTP-7 as the basis for their Mobile Test Unit, or MTU, a ground-based high-energy anti-aircraft laser. After several successful test firings at Redstone Army Arsenal, the laser was reportedly transferred to NASA. These variations and modifications showcase the adaptability and versatility of the AAV landing vehicle, enabling it to serve a wide range of purposes and roles within the United States Marine Corps. The Amphibious Combat Vehicle, or ACV, is set to replace the AAV as the primary amphibious assault vehicle for the United States Marine Corps. The transition to the ACV highlights the commitment of the Marine Corps to adapt to changing threats and maintain a cutting-edge amphibious assault capability. The US military's Amphibious Combat Vehicle, or ACV, was developed to replace the aging Assault Amphibious Vehicle, or AAV, which had been in service since the early 1970s. The need for a new vehicle arose from the requirement to provide better protection, mobility and survivability for Marines during amphibious assaults and operations on various terrains. The AAV's limitations, especially in terms of force protection and mobility, highlighted the necessity for a more modern and capable platform that could keep up with the demands of current and future combat scenarios. The ACV program began in 2011 and was initiated by the U.S. Marine Corps, or USMC, to replace the AAV and provide enhanced capabilities. Initially, the program aimed to develop a high-speed amphibious vehicle capable of rapid ship-to-shore movement. However, practical considerations such as cost, technology limitations, and the need to balance armor protection with mobility led to a phased approach. The first phase, ACV 1.1, focused on delivering a more traditional amphibious vehicle with improved survivability and off-road performance. The ACV 1.2 phase aims to incorporate higher water speeds and self-deploying capabilities without compromising on other critical features. The Amphibious Combat Vehicle, or ACV, is designed to be a versatile platform capable of carrying various weapon systems depending on the mission requirements. It can be equipped with a 30mm cannon, which provides significant firepower against both infantry and light armored vehicles. Additionally, the ACV can mount an M2.50 caliber machine gun or Mark 19 grenade launcher, enhancing its ability to engage a range of targets. These weapons can be integrated into a remote weapon station, allowing for safer operation by crew under protection. The flexibility of its armament options ensures that the ACV can effectively support a wide range of combat operations, from offensive strikes to defensive engagements. The ACV is designed to transport a crew of three, driver, gunner and commander, along with 13 fully equipped marines. This allows for rapid deployment and maneuverability of a reinforced rifle squad directly from ship to shore or across diverse terrains. The vehicle's interior is spacious enough to accommodate necessary supplies, enabling the transported troops to operate for up to two continuous days without requiring immediate resupply. This capacity makes the ACV particularly useful for rapid response scenarios and extended missions in hostile environments.
The ACV is powered by a 690 horsepower engine, providing it with substantial power for both land and water operations. This engine enables the vehicle to reach speeds of up to 65 miles per hour on paved roads and over 6 knots in water. The vehicle's mobility is further enhanced by its 8x8 wheeled configuration, which offers superior maneuverability and off-road performance compared to its tracked predecessors. This configuration not only improves speed, but also reduces maintenance and increases reliability, crucial factors for extended amphibious and ground operations. The ACV's armored hull is constructed using advanced mine-resistant materials that provide enhanced protection against small arms fire, mines, improvised explosive devices or IEDs, and other threats. The vehicle's design includes a V-shaped hull to deflect blasts from underneath, further increasing crew survivability in hostile environments. This mine-resistant architecture is a significant improvement over the older AAV, providing three times the force protection capability and greatly enhancing the vehicle's survivability on the modern battlefield. The ACV is not a one-size-fits-all solution. It comes in multiple variants designed to fulfill specific operational roles. The ACVP, or Personnel Carrier variant, focuses on troop transport and is the primary configuration. There is also a Command and Control variant, or ACVC, which is equipped with advanced communication systems and workstations to coordinate operations, and a recovery variant, ACVR, designed for vehicle recovery and maintenance support on the battlefield. Each variant plays a vital role in enhancing the flexibility and capability of the Marine Corps in amphibious and ground operations. The ACV program has adopted a phased development approach, allowing for gradual enhancements and capability improvements. The initial ACV 1.1 phase focused on creating a robust, versatile vehicle for current operational needs. The future ACV 1.2 phase aims to integrate higher water speeds and additional seating capacity, further expanding the vehicle's operational envelope. The Marine Corps is also exploring technological upgrades such as manned-unmanned teaming capabilities, allowing ACVs to operate in conjunction with drones and other unmanned systems for enhanced situational awareness and combat effectiveness. The ACV represents a significant advancement in the US Marine Corps' amphibious capabilities, combining improved protection, mobility and versatility to meet a wide range of mission requirements. As development continues, the ACV is set to play a pivotal role in the future of amphibious warfare, ensuring that the Marines remain a formidable force on land and sea. This concludes our episode that provides a glimpse into the US Marine Corps' amphibious fighting vehicles. So what do you think about these fascinating vehicles? What other pieces of military hardware would you like us to cover in our future episodes? Also, if you were lucky enough to see these vehicles up close, or better yet, operated one, please comment. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.